debate. The Honourable Member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to take the floor today to continue the debate on Bill C-76, an act to amend the Canada Elections Act and other acts, and to make certain consequential amendments, also known as the Elections Modernization Act, on behalf of my constituents in Guelph who are keenly interested in the Elections Canada Act, the changes that we're putting forward. Uh, Guelph has been a centre for elections fraud in other elections, and so they're wanting to see us take the steps necessary to ensure fair elections, especially in my riding of Guelph. I've participated in this debate in other stages through the House, and I'm very pleased to be able to weigh in after the Senate has had a chance to look at the bill and we're approaching the final debating periods in this place. Bill C-76 does many things that will modernize our electoral system, including to make it more secure, more transparent, and more accessible. The bill builds on recommendations made by the Chief Electoral Officer following the 42nd general election. It was also informed by the study of these recommendations that was conducted by the House of Commons Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs, and I was pleased to sit in on some of those meetings. It's noteworthy that this bill implements over 85% of the Chief Electoral Officer's recommendations, and also of note is that the parties were in agreement coming forward with what we have in front of us today. To set the stage for my comments, I'd like to quote the words of the former Chief Electoral Officer in his report. Over the years, amendments to the Act have added new requirements and made new rules with little regard to the overall burden placed on electors, candidates, parties, volunteers and election workers. In the last decade, changes have been made without taking into account the rapidly shifting technological context we now need to evaluate whether there are better ways to achieve the same results as we've had in the past. That's from our former Chief Electoral Officer framing our discussion today. These words from the Head of Elections Canada are a good illustration of the importance of modernizing our electoral process to bring it into the 21st century. That's why, by implementing the recommendations, Bill C-76 will make the electoral process more efficient for all involved, while continuing to protect the integrity of our elections. And this includes changes that will affect the candidates. I'd like to go through some of those measures that should be of particular interest to the members of this House. Mr. Speaker, the Chief Electoral Officer indicated that many aspects of the existing nomination process reflect a view of candidacy that's simply out of step with modern approaches. For example, the requirement for a witness to file the nomination documents suggests that the candidate is only reluctantly accepting the nomination. Bill C-76 proposes to modernize the process for prospective candidates. First, the changes to the Elections Canada Act proposed in Bill C-76 will allow either the candidate or a witness to file nomination papers. This change corrects an anachronism and at the same time respects the tradition by allowing the candidate to choose who is best to file the, these important documents. While on the subject of filing nomination papers, I'd also like to note that Bill C-76 will bring the necessity or the necessary legislative amendments to allow Elections Canada to develop an electronic portal to allow documents to be filed electronically. Since all those present in this House have been candidates, we can all appreciate how these changes will facilitate the nomination process and bring it into the 21st century by taking advantage of available technologies. Another key change in Bill C-76 that will affect candidates is the removal of the $1,000 deposit requirement for prospective candidates. In late October 2017, Mr. Speaker, a court in Alberta held that the candidate nomination deposit was unconstitutional. The government did not appeal the decision, and Bill C-76 makes the necessary changes to comply with the decision. This change would remove a financial impediment to, particip to those participating in the electoral process as a candidate. 
Mr. Speaker, such a change aligns perfectly with an objective that is central to Bill C-76, that is, to make the electoral process more accessible. There are other changes affecting candidates that I would like to mention here, and this relates to the party's endorsement of candidates. Following Bill C-76, registered political parties will be able to provide Elections Canada with a list of all the candidates they are endorsing during the elections, uh, the general election. Previously, parties had to do so individually in each electoral district for each candidate and with individual returning officers. This is a remnant from a time when the elections administration was highly centralized. There's no reason to allow such a burdensome process to continue in the 21st century. Going forward, returning officers will be able to confirm the endorsement of a candidate in the electoral district simply by looking at a global list provided by the registered political parties. These changes are only examples of how Bill C-76 will modernize our electoral processes. Another such example that relates to candidates is with respect to identification. I believe that many Canadians would be surprised to learn that while they, as electors, are required to show identification to vote, but we, as candidates, are not required to do so for the nomination process. This will also change with Bill C-76. Prospective candidates will be required to provide a proof of identification with their nomination papers. This will not limit the ability of a candidate to use another name by which they're commonly known, such as a nickname. It only means that if they wish to use a name other than the one that's on their identification, they will need to provide evidence that they are in fact known by this name. Mr. Speaker, we believe that this is a reasonable thing to ask candidates to provide evidence of their identity as a measure to ensure the integrity of our electoral system. The last series of changes I'd like to note are the amendments that Bill C-76 brings to the treatment of candidates' expenses during the election period. It's noteworthy that these changes are also made in response to the recommendations of the Chief Electoral Officer. Most importantly, changes are being made to the reimbursements of candidates with respect to expenses incurred during the election period for child care or the care of a person with a disability. Following the passage of Bill C-76, these expenses will not be counted towards a candidate's spending limit. The candidate will be allowed to use his or her personal funds to cover these expenses, and they will be reimbursed at 90% instead of the current 60%. We believe that this will prove an important measure that once again makes our ele elections more accessible to a wider range of candidates, including women and people with disabilities. Mr. Speaker, during the debates on this important legislation, we've talked a lot about the measures related to foreign interference, in fact, was mentioned in the previous speech, electors' identification requirements and other issues coming from offshore. I'm pleased that the debate today has given me the opportunity to discuss some of the lesser-known as aspects of the Elections Modernization Act. And really, I think we're heading in the right direction. The Senate's made some good suggestions. The committee was very collaborative and came forward with measures that really will improve our electoral process, including the process relating to candidates. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.